Hello viewers and welcome to the very first episode of Mechanics Brewery Season 3, where I review the various homebrew mechs created by the Lancer fandom, and as you can see from the title below, yes, I have decided to just review everything from Kai Tave's field guide to Sultan because, fuck it, it's amazing. If you are actual newcomer and wondering where are the Chandrasekhar and Herschel core bonuses and the two CNH mechs, Charioteer and Percy Lat, I have reviewed them a long while ago and you should be able to get the links to those videos right at where I'm pointing. Now, let's get going with Kalista, from Chandrasekhar and Herschel, by Kaitave. Arnis, also known as Eskrima or Kali, is a weapon-based traditional Filipino martial arts. For those that practice Arnis, they are called Arnisada or Eskrimador for Eskrima, and of course, Kalista for Kali. The reason for the multiple names is that nobody bothered to write things down for a very long time and then the Spanish came and people slapped Spanish words and Spanish influence on it. When the Spanish banned civilians from having full-sized swords, people just grabbed stick and continued practicing with it. This in fact, lasted all the way to the modern day in the form of modern Arnis where someone finally figured out that they should write things down and now it's the national sport of Philippines. Named after the practitioner, Kalista is one rock-solid mech made for destroying things with sheer brute force that has the subtlety of a main battle tank. Looking at its stats, Kalista has high health, 2 armor, low evasion, and low E defense. It's rather slow on its feet, is a bulky big boy, and has a barely acceptable heat cap along with an excellent repair cap. Its sensor range however, is very short, and it's not very good at tech attack either. As for its traits, it has three of them. First, reinforced frame. Kalista is immune to shredded condition. Second, built to last, Kalista only needs two repairs to fix it when it is destroyed. And third, lumbering, when Kalista boosts, it can only move in a straight line. With these traits combined, Kalista will be a tough as all hell mech that's unfortunately not very maneuverable. For its weapon mounts, Kalista has three, two main, and one heavy, along with five base system points. As for its core power, Kalista can activate Berserker Driver with ruggedized construction. Basically, as a reaction, when you take a structure damage and have to roll a structure check, you can do this instead. Not only could you just ignore the check, you immediately heal back to full health, clear all conditions, and could repair structure damage for one repair each. And for the rest of the scene, you deal an additional plus 2 bonus damage with all melee weapons for each point of structure you repair. In a nutshell, you have to try really really hard to die in a Kalista, and before even that happens, you will bash a couple dozen heads in. For the rest of the license, you get Tiger Claws and ERA layering in the first section. Tiger Claws Just a pair of bladed gauntlets, short threat, decent consistent damage, and reliable one. Also, you can use this even when jammed because how else are you supposed to lose reception with your fists, and it deals plus 1d3 bonus damage against shredded or unarmored targets. Either way, you will do some serious damage with this thing, albeit closer than comfortable. ERA layering, explosive pack protection. When you take hit from enemy's melee attack, the attacker will take 2 explosive damage, which would be hilarious if it's a grunt. When you are grappling or being grappled by another character, you can spend a full action to dealing 6 explosive damage to them but you will be impaired until the end of your next turn. Whether in defensive or offensive purpose, ERA layering will have quite an impactful blow. Aside from Kalista frame itself, you get Makua Whittle Chainsword and Repair Paste Capillaries in the second section. Makua Whittle Chainsword It's a chainsword, short threat, big damage, overkill, but costs 1 heat to attack. And there's another thing, if you roll a 6 on the damage dice, or maximize the damage otherwise, you get an additional plus 1d6 damage dice. If you roll 6 or maximize that damage dice, you get to repeat it again up to a maximum of plus 3d6 bonus damage. Basically, this thing is the combat drill's little brother, a lot more practical to use, and almost just as brutal. Repair Paste Capillaries, Future GUI Duct Tape For once per round, after taking 5 or more damage, not including heat or burn, after armor and resistance, as a reaction, you may expend a limited charge to gain 4 plus grit over shield as well as plus 2 accuracy to the next skill check or save you make until the end of your next turn. It might not actually patch you up, 
but the repair paste could still last for a couple incoming fires. In the final section, you get motorized Tetsubo and Agaon class NHP. Motorized Tetsubo. Big, giant, chain club. Decent threat, massive damage, overkill. On hit, if you roll 6 on one of the damage dice, the Tetsubo gets plus 4 bonus damage. Roll 6 twice, plus 7 bonus damage. Roll 6 thrice or get the damage maximized instead, and you get plus 10 bonus damage and the target becomes shredded until the end of their next turn. With a full action, you can just swing the Tetsubo wildly, forcing all characters in burst 2 to pass a hull save or take 1d6 plus 3 kinetic damage, and get knocked back by 2 spaces and knocked prone too. On a success, they take half damage and not get knocked back or prone. Motorized Tetsubo is a goddamn uncontrollable monster, but swing this thing enough times and everything will die. As a bonus, if you find yourself surrounded by enemies, this will be a big reminder that you are not the one trapped by them. And finally, Agaon class NHP, shrugging off pain has never been easier. For once per round as a reaction, when you are hit by an attack or fail a save that gets you immobilized, jammed, or stunned, you can take 3 heat to gain resistance to all damage and automatically pass all hull and agility saves until the end of your next turn. This effect starts after damage dealt by the triggering attack or save so you can't shrug off all damages just yet, but it starts before the condition is applied. In short, this thing will let you weather through the worst of punishments at the worst of times. As a conclusion, Kalista is a brick house, you can't blow it down no matter how hard you try, and it hurts really really bad if you use it to cave someone's face in. As a whole, its license is packed with brutal close range weapons and defensive measures that let you shrug off anything. So, if you are looking for a simple but effective grindhouse of death, give Kalista a look.